This recording is going to describe to you one type of epithelial tissue. So here we see all of the different kinds of our epithelial tissues and you'll notice one thing they all have in common. All epithelial tissues are going to be next to lumen. What is a lumen? A lumen is an open space inside of our body. So if you think of any of your body cavities, like the space inside your stomach, for example, here we have some space inside of our stomach, or inside of our blood vessels, those are spaces inside of our body. And all of our epithelial tissues are going to separate our body from the outside world. So here we have the inside of our trachea, and there's going to be air inside of our trachea, and our air comes from the outside world. So this epithelium is going to protect the inside of our body from the outside of the world. So all of our epithelial tissues are going to separate our body from the outside world, okay? Today, specifically, we are going to be looking at simple squamous epithelium, so this box right here. Let's take a closer look at what we see for simple squamous epithelium. This is a histological section of our kidney. And as we slice through our kidney, we see lots of open spaces here. And we're not just seeing simple squamous epithelium, we're also seeing simple cuboidal epithelium. So what do we need to actually focus on when we look at this slide? We need to look at these three or four areas right here. There's another one right here. Okay, what we're looking at is a group of blood vessels. These are called our glomerulus, or some people pronounce it glomerulus. And then we have a space, and lining this space, we have simple squamous epithelium. So we're gonna get a little bit closer in just a second, but I wanna draw your attention to the name of this tissue, simple squamous epithelium. So let's do a quick review. What does the term simple mean? If you were thinking that there is only one layer of cells in a simple epithelium, you are correct. What is the other option? You can have one layer of cells or you can have more than one layer of cells. And when you have more than one layer of cells, we call that stratified epithelium. We're not gonna worry about that in this video though. So our next word in the name of our tissue is squamous. What does the word squamous mean? All of our squamous cells are flat and thin. And when we zoom in in just a second, we are going to see that all of our squamous cells are very thin. In my opinion, a squamous cell kind of looks like a fried egg. So we have the yolk in the middle of our fried egg. That's going to be our nucleus. And then our the white of our egg kind of comes up and it envelops our nucleus there, but all you're left with is this thin section here on the sides, and that is what our squamous cell looks like. It kind of looks like a fried egg. If you look at a fried egg from the top, you're going to see it has kind of an irregular border and a nucleus in the middle, and that nucleus, when you look at it from the top, tends to be round, but our nuclei are going to be a little bit more drawn out, and I'll show you that here in just a second. So our last word is epithelium, or epithelia is plural, and remember our epithelium is going to be bordering lumen. So we're going to have that white space. So now let's zoom in. Here we can see the same glomerulus in the middle. Okay, that's our glomerulus. That means it's a blood vessel network. 
and bordering our white space, we have simple squamous cells. So here we can see we've got a few nuclei. Our nuclei are going to be long and drawn out. And our cell is going to be very thin as well. So here we're just looking at cells and we don't really see nuclei because the nuclei did not make it into this part of the slide. But we can see some good nuclei here that are pretty thin and drawn out. Next, we need to know where in our bodies we find simple squamous epithelium. Well, right now we're looking at a cross-section of a kidney. That part of the kidney is called the nephron, and in specific we are looking at the glomerular capsule. Well, we don't need to um, necessarily remember all of that. It depends on what section of the class we're in. So we'll put glomerulus of the nephron as well as other portions of our nephron. And then we find simple squamous epithelia in many other places. Another great place to find simple squamous epithelia are the alveoli in our lungs. This is where gas exchange is occurring. We find simple squamous epithelia in our endothelium. Our endothelium is the lining on the inside of our blood vessels and heart. We also find simple squamous epithelium in our mesothelium. Our mesothelium is going to be the serous membrane surrounding the outside of our lungs. So we can also include serous membranes. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of some various locations where we can find our simple squamous epithelium. Now let's talk about function. Now you may not know right off the top of your head what the glomerulus of a nephron does or even what it is where it's located. So let's think about our lungs. You should be able to think about your lungs fairly well. Your lungs are going to take in air from the outside of your body and then you're going to breathe air back out. What happens when that air is inside of your lungs? you exchange gases with the outside world. So you exhale carbon dioxide and you bring oxygen into your blood. That means that this oxygen and carbon dioxide have to move across that alveolar membrane very quickly. So a great function for simple squamous epithelium is rapid diffusion. Rapid diffusion is a great function because it also describes what's going on in our endothelium. Endothelium, remember, lines the inside of your blood vessels, and so it's going to make up your capillary wall. And at your capillaries, you exchange nutrients, dissolved gases, and waste with your tissues. And those substances need to cross that capillary wall very quickly. So rapid diffusion is excellent. We also see serous membranes as a location for a simple squamous epithelium. So in addition to rapid diffusion, we can reduce friction. So that every time you breathe in and breathe out and your thoracic cavity volume changes, you are not going to feel that because your serous membranes are going to secrete serous fluid to reduce friction. So I'm going to put secrete serous fluid in parentheses. Secreting serous fluid is the immediate action that serves to reduce friction. All right, let's take a look at another place in our body where we see simple squamous epithelium so that you can see a different picture. Here we have a blood vessel and on the very inside of our blood vessel we see endothelium which is our simple squamous epithelium. So I'm pointing to a couple of nuclei here that are pretty thin and drawn out and surrounding the entire inside of our blood vessel we see that simple squamous epithelium. I also have everything that I wrote on the previous page here written on my slide. 
Now we've seen our simple squamous epithelium twice from the side where it looks like a fried egg and the nucleus is our yolk. Now let's look at it from the top. Here we have two comparisons. This is our kidney tubule. Here and here we have alveoli in our lungs and it's written on the picture so I'm not going to write it again. But here we're seeing our simple squamous epithelium from the top. So again we have that sort of fried egg outline with our nice round nucleus in the middle. Whereas in the kidney we see our fried egg from the side. And our cell looks a little bit different. Okay, so one more picture and then we'll be done. Okay, here we see our kidney on the right where we have our simple squamous epithelium pointed out with an arrow but we can also see some simple cuboidal epithelium here and so when you are looking at a kidney slide don't be alarmed but you do see multiple types of tissues so here we also see our simple cuboidal epithelium which will be covered in a different video if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact your instructor.